and welcome back to another episode here on Hearts and Apron. So with spring break in mind, I thought that we would do something a little bit fun today. So we are going to be going over movie ideas for, you guessed it, Harry Potter. It's one of my absolute favorites. So I like to go a little bit all out. This is probably a little bit more all out than I normally would, but I wanted to share some of my ideas with you. So we will be going over some meal ideas. I also have some games and activities, including a little bit of a potions fun thing just for you. So make sure you stay tuned. If you haven't already subscribed, you know what to do. And let's go ahead and get going. Actually, you know what? I just don't feel like my outfit is feeling my vibe. I know what to do. Um, I'm digging the vibe, but I don't know if this was the vibe that I was going for. Let's try that again. Oh, no, no, definitely not. This is not where we were going. Let's try this again. Okay, way better, right? I got my hat, I got my cloak, I got my house pride with my red and my crest. Let's go ahead and get going. What house are you in in Hogwarts? Welcome to potions class, or at least what I'm calling potions class today. And here I'm going to be giving you some fun ideas to brew up a little bit of something extra for your movie night. And we're gonna start out with bath salts. So grab your cauldron, it's time to make some magic. Today in my blend, I am going to be using Lang Lang, sandalwood, and just a little bit of orange oil. I actually prefer neroli, but I didn't have any on hand, so I'm going to be using sweet orange. But I wanted to give you the heads up. If you decide that you would like to use orange or any kind of citrus oil, make sure that you do not go directly out into the sun as it does react with the sun and kind of make you extra sensitive. So, just a tip. Now, there are so many recipes for bath salts that you can find, and this is just a simple one. I use these exact materials every time I make mine, but I don't generally measure, so I looked on Pinterest and I found one with specifics for you that we're going to follow. You'll find this linked down below if you want more information on it. It's a great site and it tells you the benefits of each ingredient, and it gives this, you the skinny on some of the popular essential oils to add to your fun. I'm also using bottles that I purchased on Amazon to make them. I usually use these for spices, but I stole a couple just for this project. They are also linked down below. Just for the record, Hope actually used different oils for her bath salts. She used lavender, sandalwood, and vanilla. It smelled so amazing. And I have to admit, I love to look up the properties for the oils I use. It makes it an even more magical experience when brewing up some bath salts. For instance, I know Lang Lang, while also smelling amazing, also lifts the mood and can help balance your emotions in a positive way. Where peppermint adds an invigorating, refreshing quality that can calm you and help you get moving in your day. Um, so I'm not going to spend all this time telling you everything about essential oils as I'm sure many of you already know much more than I do and if not there are far wiser people that can give you that information but I'm just going to give you the idea. Thank you so much for checking out this fun potions class activity with us today. I think that bath salts are just perfect for this. I mean, they're restorative, they're relaxing, they make time stop and slow down for a minute. Isn't that magic? Now, if you're wanting some more potions class activity ideas, can I encourage you to look on Pinterest? There are so many vast ideas, but for one quick more in a bath kind of idea, you might want to get some aloe vera gel and some glitter. Putting the two together, you have an instant glitter gel. It is super impressive to kids, and even as an adult, sometimes some glitter gel can just be fun. Now, if you wanna take it a little bit more, check Pinterest for science experiments. There are so many adorable ideas, and I am guaranteeing you, you will find something that is just incredible. So, now let's change this up for a second and talk about games and activities, but make sure to stay tuned, because after all of this, we are going to be going over some recipe ideas you aren't going to wanna miss out on. So for my first game idea, I am suggesting that you look online for a puzzle or some Legos that are Harry Potter. We found this vintage puzzle on Etsy many years ago, and I started to put it together for you, and then I realized that that was going to take way too much time, and I don't know what I was ever thinking. So I obviously scrapped that, but I still wanted to give you the idea that a puzzle can be such a fun way to just kind of add a little bit more to your movie night, especially because it's a quiet kind of game that everybody can work on while watching a movie. 
So this game is a little bit more hands-on, and I bet you're looking at it saying, how is Guess Who Harry Potter? Well, many years ago, we decided to redo our Guess Who game and make it a Harry Potter themed. Now, I do not unfortunately have all the printables for this exact set, but what I do have for you is an Etsy version that I found for you, and it is linked down below if you decide that you would like to do this too. It was so fun. As you can see, we even played a couple rounds on film, not even realizing it, um, just because we were having such a good time. Now, if you are wondering what that black glove thing is on my daughter's hand, that is her art glove so that she doesn't like wipe off the image on the screen while she's working. She didn't realize that she had it on for this and the chess game. Since we're talking about Etsy, it brings me to my next ideas. Check Etsy for printables. I was able to find all kinds of fun from writing prompts, bingo games, coloring pages, even drinking games if you're looking for adult fun. I was so impressed by the many options that there were. I make sure you go over there and check out what these awesome creators have to offer. Next, Wizard's Chess. Now this and Quidditch are the first two things that I think of when I think of Harry Potter games. Um, now obviously you can see my Wizard Chess features Lord of the Rings characters, but that's semantics, right? And yes, one Samwise is gone and a uh, wreath might have lost its head in a fearsome battle with a cat, but it works! Um, so as you can see in this video, my daughter just literally slays me at this Wizarding Chess game. I would like to state in my defense. Normally, it's her and her dad who get to play while I am cooking or getting something done. Um, they're better at it anyway. I really need to practice more. Do you guys like to play chess? Let me know down below. All right, guys, it is time to make like a house elf and get cooking. So let's go ahead and head over to the stove area. Let's go. So if you're a fan of the movies, you know that it can take all weekend to get through the movies, especially if you're doing a true marathon. So I decided to add a tea time snack to my ideas as well as the dinner fun. So that's where we're going to start. And we're going to be doing that with Hagrid's Rock Cakes. If you're a fan of the books, you may have noticed Hagrid, the really well-meaning, isn't the best baker. The kids call the scones that he makes for when they come over for tea rock cakes. So we're going to be making some lemon scones in honor of that. And I'm just following the basic recipes that are on the back. I picked these up at World Market and all I did was add water. Um, while I'm hoping that mine are not equally hard, we're going to go ahead and keep Her Hagrid in mind while we're making these scones today. And at the same time, we are going to be making a really awesome tea that I picked up from David's Tea. And I also have that linked. It's called Magic Potion Tea. And the best part about this is it changes color when you add citrus. So it adds just a little bit of that magical fun for your kids and for adults too. So you might be wondering, what is it about this tea that we just made that is so special? So I am going to show you. I decided to cool it down and make it into an iced tea. Um, this also is fantastic warm. You can see it's a pretty dark blue purple color. Now here's the trick. Add a little bit of lemon. Thank you. 
All right, my friends, let's talk about dinner now. We are gonna start out with a light appetizer, making some deviled dragon's eggs. Um, I found this idea on Pinterest. A lot of people were doing it for Easter time or spring, and I thought it would work perfectly for a Harry Potter edition. It totally reminds me of book four, which is my absolute favorite Harry Potter book. I mean, number one will always hold an incredibly special part in my heart because it is one of the things that brought the magic to the world and kind of encouraged so many people to get involved with it. But number four, you get to see a little bit of the different wizarding worlds from all over other places, and I really enjoyed that part. So because of that, we are also going to be making a gillyweed salad, which is also inspired by book four, when Harry Potter has to eat gillyweed to go under the water for a swimming adventure. Now, hopefully our gillyweed weed looks a lot more appetizing than his did. His looked really icky, but we are going to be making some spiraled cucumbers to go into our salad for the gillyweed. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna be pretty bomb. After that, we are going to be making a Mrs. Weasley special because we need to acknowledge her magnificent fab. And after that, it's time for chocolate frogs. I mean, you can't do Harry Potter without chocolate frogs, right? So I saw this idea online and basically you are just going to tap all over your egg with a knife or something else and just put food coloring on top. I had these extra liquid dyes and so I decided to use them. I will link the person that I got this idea from down below because she needs credit because it turned out so cute. Um, after you get the dye on, you are just going to leave them there for 30 minutes. Um, she recommended putting them into plastic bags so that you can really swirl the color around. I don't have any plastic bags, so I just went ahead and used this clear glass Pyrex pan. Um, I feel like it still worked really well. After the 30 minutes, you are going to just pour some white vinegar over top. And evidently, this just seals in the color in those eggs. Guys, this turned out so adorable. So now that the eggs are all cut up, what we're going to do is just go ahead and mush up the inside. And there are tons of different recipes when it comes to making deviled eggs. I don't know which one's best, I can just tell you what I do. And I will be adding a little bit of mayonnaise, a little bit of spicy mustard. We're also going to be adding some moss green food dye to give it a little bit more of that crazy dragony essence. And then on top, we're gonna to be sprinkling, sprinkling pardon me, some dill poppy seeds, and sesame seeds on top, just to give it a little bit of extra color and variation. Okay, so we've got to taste test one of these babies. Let's see. Well, look at how pretty. It's got all the colors. Mm-hmm. Tastes like a devil egg to me. Okay, so now we are going to make some Mrs. Weasley inspired meat pies. I'm not quite sure which movie it is, but there's a time where Harry and Hermione are at the Weasley's house for the holidays and they bring in all these little pies and they're eating them. I think that they are mince pies, but for us we are going to make our favorite mini chicken pot pies. Um, and I'm going to start out by making some gravy. And to do that I'm just using some chicken broth, I'm using the Better Than Bouillon and some flour mixed into some cold water. You want to make sure that you mix that flour into the cold water because if not it kind of makes a chunk once it hits the hot water and it won't ever mix in properly, just as a tip. Um, I used about two tablespoons of 
flour to go to one cup of broth. After that, I added some chicken that I had had from a previous meal, all nicely diced. It was just really simply seasoned, as well as some peas. This is what we like for our pot pies. It's really easy. And then we are going to pull out our Pillsbury pie crusts. To finish off these mini pies, I am going to use these little tins that I got off Amazon. Guys, they are so cute. I think they're like three inches wide. And then I'm going to be using this pancake mold as well as these cookie cutters that I picked up from Pottery Barn. And I'm just going to form them like you would with any other pie. I will say I feel like I should have pushed harder on the cookie top, like the cookie cutter tops, and maybe done some egg whites on top because I feel like you couldn't see the crest as well as I would have liked and I'll be doing that next time, maybe adding some glitter. <laughs> um, but these were really tasty and such an easy snack. My daughter like consumed so many of them so quickly. These are a definite, fun, but simple, but impressive snack to have for your meal for Harry Potter night. Now it's time for our Gillyweed salad. I'm just gonna basically be making the beginning and start of this just like I would with any other salad. I've got some carrots, some celery, some tomatoes, I'm just gonna chop those up as well as some fresh baby spinach. And then I'm going to be using a spiraler like people use for their zucchini noodles and stuff to make the cucumber gillyweed. Can I also make the tip that this would also be such a cute gillyweed water idea? This was just really super simple, but it just added that little bit of extra to our meal. I hope that you like it. Let me know down below. Also, don't forget to let me know what is your favorite Harry Potter movie? So now I'm gonna make some chocolate frogs and I'm gonna take you along with me and show you what I do step by step. So we're gonna start out with this lovely little chocolate frog mold that I got off Amazon years ago for one of my daughter's birthday parties. And then we are going to be using semi-sweet chocolate chips from Gerardelli, a little bit of half and half. I'd actually prefer to be using heavy whipping cream, but unfortunately I didn't have it. And we're going to make these chocolate frogs just a little bit sassy special because you know I can't help it. So we're going to be adding little English toffee chunks to the inside of these chocolate frogs. And then on top, we're gonna to be adding some green glitter because that's just who I am, right? So let's go ahead and get cooking. We're gonna start out by making the nougat center of our chocolate frogs. And what I'm gonna do is just throw in some chocolate chips and some half and half. And I'm gonna be warming them up in 15 second intervals for about 45 seconds and you'll see how the texture changes. And that's when I know it's done and I just kind of set it aside. After that, I'm going to be warming up my chocolate yet again in another bowl, but I won't be adding any half and half this time. And I will continue to do that 15 second rule going no more than 45 seconds because you wanna be warming this up mainly with your momentum. If you've seen my episodes before, you know that chocolate will hold its shape. So, it might look like it is still needing to be melted when it is just fine and it is hot enough if you just give it a simple stir. So if you do not do that, your chocolate will get like these weird bubbles and it will also get this powdery look and it will not have that shiny snappy look that we know from the chocolates that we all know and love. So once my chocolate's completely melted, I am just gonna put a little bit into each frog and kind of mix it around with my food safe paintbrush. And then I'm going to be putting in toffee bits and I got the Heath toffee bits. And I actually recommend putting in a little bit more than I had right here because my daughter said it needed more. And then we're just gonna ball up this nougat mixture and kind of smoosh it down inside. After that, we're going to take the remaining chocolate spread it over top making sure to get all the sides because that creates our crust on the outside that keeps all the filling in set it outside to cool and then once they're done they should just pop right out okay friends i've been having so much fun with this episode i decided to add an extra activity or bonus thing here so we are going to be doing one more potions inspired little idea and it is going to be making drinkable potions for you in these cute little bottles that I got at Dollar Tree. These came six for a dollar, and they do have like these cute little corks, which I just feel gives that total Harry Potter vibe. Now, when I first got these, I was like, this is great, but how am I going to get anything in them? I had the best idea. I'm gonna use a little piping tip and use it as a miniature funnel. 
So we're going to be making three potions today. A Morintia, which is supposed to be the world's strongest love potion in the Harry Potter wizarding world. But don't let it fool you. It doesn't actually create love. It only creates lust. So number two, we are going to be making Felix Felices, which is a drink that gives the bear, like the person that drinks it, good luck in whatever their endeavors are. So, I mean, we could all use a little bit of luck, right? And for our last potion that we are going to be making, we are going to be making Polyjuice Potion. If you've seen the movies, you know that Polyjuice Potion allows you to take on the appearance of someone else. So let's go ahead and start making these. We are going to be using these little glitters. You know that I have an obsession with them off Amazon. I have some green, two different kinds of gold, and one silver. And we're just going to be using pomegranate juice for our Morentia, green goodness juice from both house farms for our Polyjuice Potion, um, because what else is going to bring us a little bit of luck than some Irish whiskey for that Felix Felicis? Let's go ahead and get these made. Okay, so let's try these potions. I am gonna start out with a little bit of Polyjuice Potion. Let's see. Let's try out a little bit of some more Intia and see if it really is such a powerful love potion. I don't see it feel any more love. Ah, it worked. All right, now let's try out that last potion, the one that I'm sure will be the absolute best. Shake it for a little luck. Felix Felicis. Maybe I'll get lucky and you'll subscribe today down below. Okay friends, this is the end of today's episode. I'm gonna go ahead and get comfortable and it's time to go watch the movie with my family. See you next time guys.